has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, hour two of Coast to Coast on a Monday. It's great having the Prime Minister, Cam Stewart, live with us from Toronto today, filling for Carver High. Um, I, I'm watching uh, pole vaulting. I just wanted to say, um, so in high school, I tried uh, to pole vault, right? I was I was on the, uh, all I do is, is uh, when I was a kid, I played uh, tennis, uh, I played basketball, and then I decided that if I was going to, you know, score chicks, I needed to be on the track and field team. So I tried out for uh, pole vaulting. And I'll never forget when I was at the first meet of the, uh, I guess, season. I don't, all I know is I, I made the team because nobody wants to pole vault. And uh, they, we, we had like two of us on the team. And uh, the very first meet I went to, uh, track meet in my life, I'm standing with this pole and I start running down the, the, the ramp toward the, toward the bars. And I, I was hauling ass with this giant pole and, and my quadricep tore off the bone on my leg. And I wow. went down in a heap on the ground and like smashed my face on the ground. Yeah. I had the pole like rolling across my face. <laughs> I was down on the, I was down on the ground and I tore my quadricep off the bone. Literally had to be carried, carried into the like high school, put on a gurney <laughs> and taken to a hospital. I was out of commission for seven months. I mean, I couldn't even walk, let alone run. It was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Tearing your quadricep. I have never been a fan of pole vaulting since. So I'm watching this guy from Sweden and I wish ill will on him. I don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through. So I do not root for pole vaulting after tearing my quad. All right, baseball Yankees walk it off against the blue Jays four, three and 10 in the Bronx. Here's uh, DJ LeMayu hitting a single to center in the 10th that drives home the winning run of the Yankees. One, one ready swung on line drive back up the middle. It is a base hit. Volpe scores from third. LeMayhew wins the ball game. It is a walk-off single for DJ LeMayhew in the bottom of the tent. There you go. Uh, Aaron Judge crushed his 41st home run of the season on Saturday. What did you think of the Jays? Uh, they didn't pitch to him on Sunday, did they? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of angry people like the Blue Jays. Ooh, you're scared. You're scared. I wouldn't pitch to him either. The guy's Aaron Judge. Like, he just murders the ball. I know it's like... Uh, you you can get mad at them for doing that, but there's still a rivalry there, even though the Yankees are way better. I, I don't have a real problem with it. They don't want to pitch to them. They don't have to pitch to them. It's up to the other guys in the lineup to do it. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people are angry at the Blue Jays, calling them wussies. Yeah, they are. Orioles beat up the uh, <laughs> Guardians 9-5 to five in Cleveland. Gunnar Henderson gets a little help for a two-run homer in the fourth inning to put the Orioles up 6-2 to two on the Orioles. Radio Network. Henderson laces it to right field, backing up Thomas. He's on the run, stopping at the warning track, hits off the top of the wall, and gets out of here. There's the home run we've been waiting on from Gunnar Henderson. I mean, he has been slumping forever, hitting home runs. So he finally uh, cracked the ice on Sunday. The Royals get by the Tigers 3-2 to two in Detroit at Comerica. The Royals 25-11 and 11 against the AL Central, 38-39 and 39 against all others. A.J. Melendez, the Melendez brothers, hits a pinch hit three-run homer in the ninth to give the Royals their first lead on the Kansas City Radio Network. Here's the pitch and a swing and a fly ball. Well hit. Deep right, that ball is gone. A three-run homer, a bat flip from MJ Melendez. And the Royals score three on one swing and take the lead three to two. Yeah, in the ninth inning, no less, they were down uh, two Love zip, that and team. they hit that three-run homer and they win. That was big. The Twins smack around the White Sox 13-7 to seven in target field to send Chicago to its 
20th straight loss. What do you think of that, uh, Cam? 20 straight losses. I've been betting against them on a nightly basis for like three weeks. Me and Marenzi talk about it every night on the show. Books don't give away free money, but it's with the White Sox. They have an early lead. You fade them. You're getting crazy numbers. The Royals came back against them multiple times. It's just, what are these guys doing? Tw- it is almost impossible to lose 20 games in a row in Major League Baseball. I don't care what kind of stiffs you're putting out in the field. This is a new low. It's disgusting. And they, a, a team from Chicago shouldn't be this bad. Like, this is one of the worst teams I've ever seen in the history of baseball. These guys reek. Losing 20 in a row? Are you kidding me? Come on. I mean, they're literally on pace uh, to lose yeah. like 125 games. That's almost impossible to do, Scott. Like, what? Losing 100. Like, that, they're, they're, that's the thing about baseball. Usually, like, even a bad team will lose like under 100. Like, this, these guys are brutal. Like, I don't even know, like, why they take the field. Uh, you're right, though. Betting against them is great. They're nice parlay materials. Just keep on fading these guys. I got to tell you, I watched the Pirates yesterday because every time Paul Skeens pitches, it's must-see TV for me. And I've been so invested in the Pirates and their uh, chase for one of the wild cards. And then they get IKF at the uh, deadline. He had a triple and a double yesterday. They also got Brian De La Cruz from the Marlins with his 18 home runs. And uh, they finally went out and spent some money and got some bats at the deadline, hoping that they could go on a on a push uh, for one of those wild cards. And they were up four to nothing. And Skeens really wasn't on uh, his stuff on Sunday. He was a little bit all over the place. Uh, he didn't get all the strikeouts that he normally gets, but he wasn't giving up runs. So when he left the game, it was – uh, for nothing when he was in there. And then the next thing you know, uh, they get a run and it was, you know, they let the run on a fielder's choice. They let the run in. And then the next thing, you know, they get a hit up the middle and it was four to two. And then they pulled him and, uh, and eventually they lost the game. They were up four nothing and they lost the game six, five to the D backs. Jock Peterson hits a three run Homer in the seventh inning to, Give the Snakes the lead on the Arizona Radio Network. Holderman comes set. And the one-two pitch. Swung on. Hit well to deep left center field. Going back Reynolds. Onto the track. Turns. Looks. There it goes. Go ahead. Three-run homer by Jock Peterson. And the Diamondbacks take the lead. It's now 5-4. to four. I got to tell you, um, That's tough. Cam, I think you know, the Diamondbacks have the last wild card spot by a game and a half over the Mets, three over the Cards, three and a half over the Pirates, th- uh, four and a half over the Giants, and six over the Cubs. I think it's kind of Mendoza line right there in terms of no one's going to make up six games. I-, I highly doubt someone's making up six games in that wild card, but the D-backs, have gone from being miserable to being eight games over 500, and they are six games over 500 at home, two games over 500 on the road, and they've gone eight and two in their last 10. They're playing great baseball. They are. They did the same thing last year. Like this team, they go on losing streaks and then they go on crazy winning streaks. They're the most erratic team ever, but I got to give Arizona credit. Good call by you, Pharrell. Like these guys will not go down. They will, they, they will grind. They will grind. They didn't get great pitching this year. They're finding ways. They're hit. They're, they're getting runs. Arizona is one of those teams. Hell, they beat the Dodgers last year. It's just, they're a weird baseball club, man. I wouldn't bet against these guys. You're right. They're on fire. So it's funny. you you think of the World Series last year, and they made it. So did the uh, Texas Rangers. And then, you know, uh, you look at uh, Texas. They have struggled mightily, if you ask me, trying to get back to where they were, right? Um, and, you know, they've gone three and seven in their last ten and lost yesterday. So uh, the Diamondbacks are the ones that are winning. It's not the Texas Rangers. The team that won the World Series – has struggled all year long to turn it around and to get going. And they got Mad Max back and everything, Mm -hmm. and they still don't win. Arizona, meanwhile, was bad. They have found a way to turn it around, and now they're one of the hardest teams to beat in the National League and in baseball.
recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. OMG, what <laughs> a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When right, selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hatt, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. talking to cam stewart the prime minister on coast to coast on a misery monday and we're talking baseball the padres meanwhile smacked around the rockies at petco 10 to 2 jurics and profar at it again hits a solo home run in the fifth inning to put the padres up 3-1 on the padres radio network 2-0 profar hits it in the air deep to right field dave is back he will watch it will go home run jurics and profar 19th of the season and the second of the inning for the Padres. They now lead it three to one. Provar has been unbelievable for them. And more importantly, Cam, they're four and a half behind the Dodgers in the West. And everyone thought that that division uh, was wrapped up a month ago. And times have certainly changed. The San Diego Padres, all they do is show up and win now. They got great pitching. You're set. You talked about it. The bats are coming alive. Scotty, they're a very dangerous baseball team. For once, like they've always been that team that kind of underachieves. Now they're like they're doing what they should be doing. They're a very scary baseball team. I wouldn't want to get in front of these guys. Like San Diego's good, man. I've been riding them and we've been winning a lot of money. They're hot as hell. And they shored up that bullpen at the deadline and got not one but two really good relievers uh, to make that bullpen even tougher. Uh, for San Diego down the stretch. It'll be interesting to see uh, if they can catch the Dodgers. I know for a fact, um, at the very least, in terms of uh, their standing, they're in the second wild card right now. Basically, they have the same record as the Braves, uh, one back in the loss column. So uh, the Braves, Padres, and Diamondbacks have those wild cards right now in the national league the red sox beat up the rangers seven to two in arlington at globe willie abreu hits a three-run homer his second of the game in the sixth inning to put the red sox up six two on the boston radio network three one swinging a drive into right field it is back and it is gone (laughs) well you're a does it again emotion pouring out of him as he rounds the bases a three run homer so his grandma had died saturday 
And Sunday he went out and hit a two home run uh, game. And that was the second of, of the Beautiful. game, a three run shot. So obviously he dedicated it to his granny who passed away the day before. I, I love it. Uh, I'll tell you something too, Scotty. Like you, you brought it up earlier. Like, what do you do? Like the, the thing about, uh, I don't know about Texas too. Now Scherzer, Scherzer's hurt too. Like it's one of those things that you talked about. Like I, the, the regression with that team, they don't look the same. They, they just are not the same. And uh, what, what, what can you say? A lot of people love them in that division, but uh, it turns out to be a hell of a lot harder. Everyone left Houston for dead. They're there. Seattle made some great acquisitions. So uh, it's a real battle in the West. Yeah, look, uh, I don't think the Rangers are going anywhere. They're not going. They're not winning that division. They're not winning in like a wild card spot. None of that's mm -hmm. happening. I think they're too far back. And Mad Max back on the IL, the 15-day IL, was shoulder fatigue after he left versus the Cardinals on Wednesday of last week. So last week he pitched. He got shoulder fatigue. Last week, uh, Garrett Cole, they sat him down with general fatigue. And remember, Cole has only pitched three times. Uh, going into that start over the weekend, that was his like fourth time that he's pitched. So three times he pitched, then he was tired. They had to sit him down and then they brought him, rolled him back out there and he did well on Sunday. Right. Am I, am I tripping? I think he did pitch. Oh, like, he if did. I, so yeah, he he's back, but Scherzer uh, can't stay healthy. Uh, that's obvious. Another guy, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it later. Uh, and it's right here, in fact, is the Clayton Kershaw. The Dodgers uh, watched him go out last week. The first time he pitched, he pitched four innings. The second time he pitched, he got lit up. And now they're worried about him, that he's got um, issues. And, you know, I think it's bigger than just that he didn't pitch well and got lit up. I think it's that uh, they're starting to wonder if he shot Cam. Completely. Oh, I agree with you. No, he's 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 a guy. He's been around, done great things, but you know, time waits for no man. And what about Bueller? He's been like, you know what I mean? Awful. So the thing is, the Dodgers, they do have guys coming back, but the question is, like, you know what I mean? Are they going to get successful starts? They had a lot of really good young players there too, Scotty. Like the guys that they've called up have done well. It's going to be interesting how Roberts and those guys. What do they do? Do they put these young kids in bullpen positions? Some of them might have to start. So yeah, everybody thought it was going to be a cakewalk for the Dodgers. It's not. So the Phillies trounced the Mariners 6-0 in Seattle. That ended their six-game skid. The Marlins beat the Braves 7-0 in Hot Town. I think they had two big wins over the Braves over the weekend. The Marlins, no one saw that coming. The Dodgers got by the A's 3-2. Otani stole three bases on Saturday to go over 30 on the season. And Freddie Freeman's three-year-old son is back home after being in the ICU for eight days with Gillian Barre syndrome. That is no joke. And he left the team to be with his family and his three-year-old son, who is now finally back home. So that's a good sign uh, for Freddie and his family. Uh, the Rays got by the Astros, one nothing in Houston. In fact, uh, in that series, what the Astros scored, camp four runs. I mean, Tampa went in there and messed with them. The Pirates went into Minute Maid and messed with them. And... Lance McCullers is going to miss the rest of 2024, it looks like. So what's happened to the Astros? They got back in that race. Now they're yep. a game back, but uh, they got issues. They do. They're running out of gas. They're not getting, uh, you know, the clutch hitting that they were before. And now the Mariners, Scotty, like a team that was fading, they're the ones you worry about. They actually have one of the best starting pitching units. They've always had a good bullpen, and it's all about timely hitting with them. And if the Mariners can hit, they're the best team in the division. So I, I see them on the upswing, and I see Houston like they're running out of gas right now. They do have more problems than people think. The Giants have won 8-10. of They beat uh, the Reds 8-2 in the Queen City. Nats beat the Brewers 4-3 in D.C. Angels got by the Mets in Anaheim 3-2. They took 2 of 3 in that series. And the Cubs beat the Cardinals 6-2 in Chicago at Wrigley on Sunday Night Baseball.
recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. Just got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. MG, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. Win, right? Selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend yeah. missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hack, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing the trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. at the uh, basically best uh, and worst in everything in baseball. So the best and worst money line teams in the majors so far, the best, the Guardians up 15.7 units, Yankees up 7.9, Brewers up 7.7, Nats 7.3, Royals 6.5, all up units. Those are the best money line teams this season. The worst teams the Braves <laughs> down 11.2 units. Rangers down 12.2 units. Jays down 14.2 units. And the White Sox, oh, my God, down 46.9 units. <laughs> Bet against the White Sox. So that's a $100 player. You're down. What What, what are you down, Scotty? Like 4,000? Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, how much money are you losing betting this team? Like, that's ridiculous. I don't think there's a bit. Has there ever been a team? That's down 47 units. Like, the Blue Jays are horrible. That, they got 33 units on these guys. Like, are, hey, this is nuts. Like, What do you do what with that? Say. I mean, you know what you do you with just... that? You're a Chicago bookie. You get out of the business quick. Like, you're done. Like, you're, you, you, like people are just going to fade that team. Like, you're broke. Like, I, I don't know what you do. Like, it's I, – I just don't understand how a team can be that bad. Like, even by like a little bit of a fluke, you'll win more games. Like I, 47 units, 27 and 87. That's almost impossible. I bet against them all the time, bro. Yeah, I know. No, I, I know what the best thing about them, Scott, is, which is even better than betting them pregame or putting them in parlays. When they have a lead, that old live button comes out, click, click. They blow so many leads late. It's awesome. Me and Gabe are on, on Rage, and we're just going – we're going to bet blindly against the White Sox. Oh, Kansas City, three-run home run. Grand slam to walk it off. Like, right. they just lose in the worst ways, man. It's unbelievable. They're playing did you Oakland see tonight, last too. Week, <laughs> uh, did you see last week when Bobby Witt grand slam breakfast him? He hit oh, one yeah. against them. Amazing. Yeah, we were on him. We were on him live. That's the whole thing, like, with this White Sox team in the books. I got to be honest with you. They're so bad. They haven't really adjusted the numbers properly. Like, you can't be laying minus 280 with the White Sox with like a couple like run lead. No lead is safe. Their bullpen is awful, Scotty. Me and you after a bottle of Jameson, I think, and maybe get a couple guys to pop out. But uh, they stink. They're, they're great fade material. It's amazing. Great. I tried to get in on this bet with Germany when they were down three. Now they're up on uh, Spain. 
gold medal game women 17 16 what a battle great basketball wait so gold medal what three on three gold medal yeah women's yeah germany was down they were down like three and now they're leading spain they're up 17 16 7.8 seconds left I, I tried to get them in live and spin 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 yeah now you're cost, you're costing me money this, right. this is me mafia out. get the jameson out uh here we yeah. go uh now the, uh, mlb most over under teams can we show the best over teams and best under teams the best overs the orioles yankees brewers tigers d-backs and blue jays the most over success teams the best under teams are the braves astros royals cubs mariners and reds do you like what betting the you totals there? do you like betting the totals I, I don't play as many totals as as you carver and gabe i'm more of a size man but i do play totals but the one that's shocking scotty if you take a look at the best under teams like the royals to me that's that's wild for me and that tells you like this team can rake but they get great pitching like they probably have one of the more underrated pitching staffs like their guys are oh good. i agree Michael Walk has had a year that nobody's even talking about. Like what? Like he's been fantastic. They got all these young pitchers. Yes, Lugo and a, a singer. Like these guys are fine. That's the whole thing. Mariners. We know what they're an under team. They can't hit sometimes. That makes sense. And surprisingly, Cincinnati. They used to be an over team a couple of years ago. Now they're an under team. All right. What about the no run first inning teams? The best no run first inning teams this season. How about the Buccos? 73 and 38 and the Mets, Cubs, Nats, Cards. You see the list. Do you like betting no run first innings? I I do when you when you got the Pirates uh when like Skeens on, on the hill and some other guys. The Mets one kind of surprised me at 71 and 40. That's very interesting. Uh but yeah, I don't I I I prefer betting no run first inning rather than run in first inning. Always no run right. first inning. The odds to win the National League to win the pennant in the National League. Here we go. The Dodgers and Phillies still on top with L.A. being uh, the former, Phillies the latter. And then it's the Braves, Brewers, Padres, D-backs, Mets. They don't even list my Pirates, giving them no chance whatsoever. When we come back, uh, we'll do the lion's share. Hopefully we can talk about the American League pennant as well at some point in there. We'll squeeze that in. of consistency within the AFC North, that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. 17 years under Mike Tomlin, never a losing record, never less than eight wins. You add Patrick Queen there over from your division rival. You take a look at that offensive line, which does have some question marks, but still a decent wide receiving core that they have, a running game that has Najee Harris, and a quarterback that's been there, done that. The early line, only on SportsGrid. Where are you at in terms of a starting lineup? What do you want to see from Team USA? I think you'll get guys involved, and then there's your lockdown defender at the point guard, the point of attack, right? I do like Curry. I would then go with Ant. I like Ant over Booker. I think if you look at the way the Canada game was, they looked kind of slow starting, and then they, they kind of got rolling. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. He talked about uh, Major League Baseball and its uh, its rule, or actually its uh, its relationship with sports betting and gambling. Integrity is the foremost concern, and a lot of people are questioning that given all the scandals, right? There's uh, Mercano, there's Pat Hoberg, one of the best umpires in MLB suspended right now. We don't exactly know what he did, but he's been disciplined, and he hasn't umpired a game this year. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. <laughs> Your mustache is falling. Mustache is falling off. It's got to go. <laughs> Skeen's got another strike out there. I don't want to take As soon as I take it off, they're going to give up a run. I'm, I'm trying to keep it on until he comes out of the game. It's all over the place. <laughs> Come on. I'm superstitious. He's got, you know 10, he's got 10 Ks. He's cruising. Wow. They pulled so, Skeen's, by the way. Yeah, they pulled him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Bostonian versus the book. 
the brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, so I got to tell you about this uh, BetMGM Swing for the Fences. It's a free-to-play game, and everybody's talking about it because it's so much fun. You play as the batter and pick an area of the strike zone. You get a single, double, triple, home run, or fly out. You play it once a day free. You got to be a, a BetMGM account holder, and you're going to win rewards if you get a hit. The rewards are parlay boost tokens, odds boost tokens, single game parlay boost tokens, bonus spins in eligible casino states, and even bonus bets. All rewards expire in 24 hours. So if you get a reward, you got to use the boost token on something. You might as well do it that very night, and you're good to go. All right, odds to win the World Series. We have odds to win the World Series now. We actually showed the um, National League pennant. We didn't show the American League pennant, but I, here's the American League pennant. That's a better idea. I like that. Nice move there by Luke. Uh, the Yankees still favored over the Orioles, Guardians, Astros, Twins, Mariners, Royals, Red Sox, and then uh, anybody else that uh, apparently, according to those that think they know, uh, have no chance. Do you believe in that Yankee team, Cam, or not at all? Well, pick. I'll, I'd rather have the Orioles at plus 275. I know they went through a drought. I think they're a better team once their guys get hot. The Yankees are great. Uh, they can rely on Judge, though. But I, I'm just going to say I think the Orioles one more year. A little bit disappointing last year, losing to Texas. If you're looking for a value play, I'd probably look at the Mariners at 10 to 1. All right, so as far as odds to win uh, the World Series here on the Lion Share, brought to you by BetMGM, here's your World Series odds. The Dodgers favored over uh, the Phillies, Yankees, Orioles, and Braves. On Can we what go a little planet, bit deeper? <laughs> well, like, listen, yeah, like what planet do you have to be on to believe the Braves with all of their problems this year? And all of their injuries are going to win the World Series. My World they don't Series, look like a World Series team to me. No, they don't, and they got a lot of problems. And I feel bad. I, I feel bad for you know a, a lot of they've had some bad luck, but that's life. Other teams deal with injuries and bad luck as well. They just haven't been hitting as well. I'm going to tell you, Scott, in the in the American League, give me Baltimore. And you want a dark horse? I know it's not going to be very popular with my na- late na- late night friends, but I think San Diego at twelve to one is an extreme value play. The Padres, that's a great price on them. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. And the way they're playing and the way that bullpen is shored up now and what they've done, and honestly, the season Profar's having, Machado started to heat up. They have so many guys that can hit home runs in that lineup, and they got good defense. They got it all, man. They got pitching, sees through a no-hitter. They got Musgrove. Remember, they've done it without Darvish and company. I would agree with you on those odds. So uh, the most bet teams to win the World Series at uh, BetMGM, these are the most bet teams to win the World Series. Phillies on top, then the Orioles, then Dodgers, then Yankees, Braves, Guardians, Astros, D-backs going down the line. Then you got Boston, San Diego, Seattle, and the Cubs. You know, I got to tell you, Everyone thinks Howard. the Phillies are so automatic. They've looked terrible of late. Sunday, they finally stopped the bleeding at six games, but it's been much drier than a six-game losing streak. They had been uh, losing left and right over the last three weeks. Scott, how the hell – okay, let's look at this board. So we have the Padres at 2.9%, the Mariners at 2.9%, and we have the Cubs at 2.9%. How the hell are the Cubs on that list compared to the Padres and Mariners, in my opinion? That's – like, that's crazy. The Padres are a way better team. Aaron, like, I don't know. People believe in the Cubs. Like, if they win the World Series, I'll, I'll you'd be your butler. Fly to New York. I mean, and, you know, win the World Mr. Series, Belvedere. they're not even going to get a wild card. Yeah, that's my point. How are they? The, the Cubs are at 2.9% yet, but get the Padres and Mariners are 2.9%. That's insanity. Wow, that's weird. Well, I mean, at least Seattle's got a one game lead in the West. Uh, so yes. they're a. 
Right now, they're a playoff team. The Cubs are not a playoff team, and that's just all there is to it. And frankly, uh, you know, I I agree with you on the Cubs. I'm not I'm not worried about the Cubs, but like I'm what I'm sick and tired of hearing about is the Phillies and Dodgers are so automatic, and that's why I liked your Padre bet. Like we talked about it last week on the show that. Uh, the Padres, not only did they just beat the Dodgers in a series at Petco, but they're creeping up on them. And they're already in a, a wild card. They're right there, right? So um, this is a dangerous team. And if they, you know, play a little more consistently uh, and win when they're supposed to, like they did against the Rockies yesterday, 10 2, you know, they need to win and prove that they're for real. All right, your AL MVP. For AL MVP, Aaron Judge still in the lead over Bobby Witt. Do you see any of that changing, Cam? No, the only guy, I, I love Bobby Witt. He's one of my favorite players. I, I'm a Royals fan. Gunnar Henderson is going to heat up, but he doesn't have enough time. Judge is too damn good. He's going to, how many home runs is Judge going to hit, you think, Scotty? What do you think? Well, 50, I think he's going to hit at least 60. 58? I was going to say, you think you can get 60, 60. Wow. Yeah. Well, l- minus 1100, 60. It's a lock. Put it in and uh, he's already there. Like who can catch him on that list? Nobody. That's who. So yeah. Can't bet it at minus 1100 though. That sucks. I mean, uh, what, what is he? He's at 41 already. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he, he, you know, his problem is lately, no one's pitching to him. They're walking yeah, that, him left and right. Like they did yesterday. Right. So great point. I don't think, That's how, well, first of yes. all, Gunnar Henderson couldn't win the MVP if he tried this year. It's not happening. And in fact, mm-hmm. I think Soto's uh, been more impressive for me than mm-hmm. Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson uh, basically for the last month has struggled miserably. He, he's hit like one home run in a month. So you're right. Uh, Soto's been hitting home runs left and right, and he's got huge numbers, huge home runs, huge RBIs. He's done it all, and I put him above Gunnar Henderson. And frankly, uh, with Alvarez's home run stick, I'd put him ahead of him as well. I don't deny Gunnar Henderson's talent, but he mm-hmm. dried up for a month, and I don't think if you're talking about winning in the MVP, you cannot dry up. For that much time. Now the NL MVP. The NL MVP is Shohei Otani, then Bryce Harper, and Cattell Marte. Now, I'll tell you what. Cattell Marte is just tearing it up lately. I mean, he's doing it all. Driving in runs, hitting home runs, hitting for average. He's got it all going. But they're going to still give that award to Otani no matter what. Damn right. Even if you parlay him and Judge, it's nothing. It's like minus 1100 and minus 1400. Good luck. Like it's a, you need to add like four pieces to it. I agree with you on Marte. I think he's absolutely fantastic at 16 to 1. It's a nice price, but you know it's going to Otani. Otani, too. Big hits, st- stolen bags, everything. He's just a, him and Judge are a lock. Unless Aaron Judge gets hurt, like I can't see any, th- any other result other than Otani and Judge. All right. So the AL Cy Young is going to end up being. Uh... Uh, well, it's Scoobal and Burns. Do you give it to Scoobal, or do you think Burns has done enough in Baltimore to steal it? I think Burns has done enough. And the thing about Scoobal, I know he's awesome, but his last couple of starts have not been as crisp. Like, at the end of the season, he might be running out of gas. He is no lock at minus 200 there. Lugo, he's a great call by you earlier in the show, Scott. Nine to one. He's actually deserves better than that. Kirby Castillo, no. But uh, it'll probably – I would take Burns at plus 225. That's me. And I like Lugo as a dark horse, but uh, we'll see. Scoobal, he's pitched a lot of innings. We'll see what happens with him down the stretch. All right, National League, Cy Young. I give it to Skeens over Sale, believe it or not. I think Skeens has captured baseball's imagination. Agreed. I think it's Paul Skeens as well. Sale's had an incredible year. We have to give him credit, but for my money, it's Skeels. Uh, Skeens. Wheeler looks very good at plus 250. The other guys have no, uh, not a hope in hell. All right, real quick, the AL Rookie of the Year right now. Uh, you see that, uh, the list, Kowser, Louis Giel. I don't see that happening. He dried up too much. And the no. National League Rookie of the Year, if I could even look at it, uh, evidently that's not going to happen. <laughs> The Lion's Share, presented by Bet MGM. What has happened? What has transpired here at the First Bank Center here in Denver? 
for Colorado. It wasn't just a big night of fights. It was a big night of memorable moments. Conor McGregor with us here in Denver, Colorado. Both left hand from Mark Wall. Right hand right back from Mike Perry. Can I get a face-off with Conor McGregor, man? It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking, incredible storytelling. Oh, you had to come here. All these fighters that step in here. Warriors, I have my respect. And I'm into this game, yeah. we be into this, yeah. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. I turned 59 uh, last uh, Monday. It was last Monday. And um, uh, my daughter uh, has a bunch of friends and they party and such. And they've been over here to uh, have parties. And uh, my daughter told me that uh, a couple of them said, that's really cool that your dad is so old and is rocking a mohawk. And I was like, okay. She's like, they think you're cool because you got a mohawk. <clears throat> I'm like, I think I'm cool that I have any hair at all, to be honest with you. Andy Baskin is our good friend from the fan in Cleveland, Ohio. And it's good to have him back on uh, Coast to Coast. Uh, you know what those uh, teenagers are like, right, Andy? Nothing but trouble. Oh, I got, I got two, man. I'm envious of you. And I got to tell you, I did the same thing. Like I went a, a couple days ago. I had nothing here. I'm digging it. You mm -hmm. know why? Because I'm into these like – viking series and last kingdom i could watch that stuff all day i was thinking about putting a big snake through my head right here it would have been cool yeah i think it would have been fantastic they would have been talking about it on the radio in cleveland so let me ask you about uh first of all the browns right um so i was looking at right. these contracts right of all these nfl quarterbacks that they've been given out lately how does it make everyone in cleveland feel now after they had given all that money to Deshaun Watson and when he got it and it was all guaranteed, everyone thought that they were crazy and that it was insanity and that they were stupid and that they were uh, out of their minds and everything else. And now everyone else has superseded that and then some, like they're just crushing that deal. That's almost like a blue light special now, the deal they got for Watson. The only problem has been, Andy, is that Watson yes. hasn't lived up to anything. Absolutely. You just hit the nail on the head. He's, what, 11th in the league right now in total uh, in total payroll, but it's the guaranteed money, that 250 which I think is still $100 million more than anybody else has had. So, I, I mean, I just I look at it here, and they're like, this is his year. This whole world revolves around Deshaun Watson this season. So, he has got to get it done. I was at practice yesterday. He looked pretty good, but that's in seven out seven. And nobody, nobody's wearing pads. So I got to sneeze. It's driving me nuts. Hang on a second. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> it's, it's like right there, and it doesn't want to come out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the new like, COVID. Like when you were on the radio. Three. 
Yeah, I like I never I never had these problems when you were doing radio, but now that you can actually see me, now I got yeah. the sinus problems. It's uh, you know, it's it's just God's yeah, gift, I guess. It doesn't you know. affect uh, what we think of you. We still love you, so it doesn't matter. Like I sneeze on air, I cough on air, I do it all live on air so that people can see how real we are. What am I gonna not blow my nose, not cough? Or not do the show. Like, you know, here, pick your Beauty, poison. Brother. You want me to show up? Yes. I'll do it sick, yeah. live, and you'll watch me cough and sneeze. Who cares? As long as you're there. I, people get, so I got to tell you, people get pissed at me in Cleveland when I come in and I cough every once in a while, or oh. my throat just gets a little bit clogged. I, like, I don't, it's, I'm too lazy to hit the cough button. They're you get it real, to baby. Have you, those people. They need to have a sandwich and shut up and stop complaining because they have Baskin time. And as long as they have Baskin, uh, just go cry to your mother or something. I don't have time for it. So are the Browns going to be as good as they were last year? They were really tough. I thought Schwartz had the best defense in the league. I thought um, – I, I thought, you know, bottom line was you had an old man Flacco playing quarterback. I thought he did a great job. Are they going to be that tough again? I think they got to catch the breaks. You know, like with Flacco, they were able to kind of overlook all the interceptions he was throwing because he was fine in the other team. And then that finally reared its ugly head in the playoff game. Um, I, you know, there's a part of me and I think there's a part of the fan base that really wanted Joe Flacco to come back this year, but there was no way that was going to happen because all the money that they're paying Deshaun Watson. Um, I would have liked to have seen it be the backup here, but I do think that if Deshaun struggled week one, week two, week three, this town would be going crazy for Flacco. So they brought in Jameis Winston, took some of the pressure off. I, again, I think Deshaun looks like he's going to be up for the task this year. His offensive line is going to be strong as long as they're healthy. They're going to be one of the best in the league. So he's got everything around him. Let's see if he can make it work for him. And if we get Nick Chubb back here in Cleveland, that's going to be a miracle because when he left the field against Pittsburgh last year, I didn't think there was any way he was going to play again. Now you see him. He's lifting weights. He's doing all kinds of stuff on uh, social media. So let's see. Hopefully they can get him back. I'm not sure he's not going to be on the PUP for the first four weeks of the season. Let him get healthy, and we'll take him on the other side of that. But Nick Chubb will just be a miracle story this year if he can come back. So what's the deal with the Guardians? They've been unbelievable when you think about it. What a season they've had, and no one's been able to catch him, even when they hit a rut recently. Uh, it's all bullpen. I think bullpen, um, you know, Jose Ramirez, Stephen Kwan, they've got lucky I, in some ways because they've got guys that had zero expectations to be able to do anything offensively. They've been able to do it. Now they're in a really weird spot because they don't, the rotation is all over the place. I mean, it is, excuse me, it is all over the place. And so I, I don't, When if you would have told me that Ben Lively was going to be their best starter, uh, at this point in the season, when they would have one of the best records in Major League Baseball, I would have told you you were insane. But yet, Lively's had a good season uh, out of the rotation. Who knows what's going to happen with Alex Cobb? We might see him. Even Tristan McKenzie, who's been struggling of late, when they sent him back down to the minors, and he was struggling in the minors too. Uh, the other day, he had what? He went six innings and struck out 11 yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. So, I mean, he, even he looks like he might push the rotation. So uh, are you more worried about Minnesota or Kansas City in that central? I, I think I'm more worried about the fact that they're just going to self-explode. You know, that's the thing. I Like, the, the bullpen has been so good, and I'm just worried about the innings that they're taking in right now and that they've taken in all season. And if they start to explode, then you've got – um, then they're going to have an in, uh, you're going to have an issue. But Emmanuel Class A deserves to be in that conversation for the Cy Young Award. He has been simply amazing all year as the closer. And I know we've only seen it twice before in Major League Baseball where a closer's had a shot to win uh, to win to actually win the Cy Young. I got to believe Class A, especially with relievers only going five innings, six innings, he should have a good shot at the at the Cy Young. I think that uh, he's an incredible closer. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I want my guy Skeens to win it in the National League. He's down the road uh, from you in Pittsburgh, uh, taking over Major League Baseball the way he's been pitching. So I'm excited to see him pitch. I want the Pirates to get a wild card. I think the Guardians are going to the playoffs no matter what. Andy, good to see you, my man. Take care of that COVID.
recently, I feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not making bad swings. I don't feel like I'm making terrible decisions and just had got a little bit of a streak of bad luck on par fives. Uh, didn't birdie any of them at the Open, didn't birdie any of them today. It's just, you know, and I didn't feel like I did anything terribly wrong, right? Uh, but that, that's just golf. It happens. Uh, what's done is done, and this week is the most important week of the year right now. If he lands it pin high, he's going to be off over the pin position and leave himself a tough putt there. That should bite now. He didn't like it by the looks of it, but he'll love it when he sees it. He's got this before that bunker. Put himself in a good position. Just a tiny little baby fade, ideally placed. To tie the lead at 16. OMG, what a championship Sunday we just witnessed. When, right, selfishly, you, wanna, you always want to get, get that done, but you don't want to see a teammate and a good friend you know, missing a putt for, for that happening for me. The Live Golf League delivers every single event, doesn't it? I mean, what an incredible finish there. You know what, Tyrrell Hatt, I feel for him. He's been playing beautiful golf. In fact, since Miami, he's been the best player in our league based on the strokes game metric. I'm really happy that I had my, my first Live Golf win. Now that Kelly and, and the kids are watching, just knowing that I'm bringing a trophy home for them, it feels good to say that it's coming home. Mr. Uh, Cam Stewart live with us from Toronto in for Carver High today. Thank God the Prime is back in the hizzy with us on C2C. We're going to look at baseball. A game starts at 515 here in about 20 minutes or so at Bush. It's a makeup game from earlier in the season. Manaya against Pallant at Bush. It's a pick em, what I'm seeing right now. Uh, I don't know if it's changed that much up there on the board. Maybe uh, Mets minus 115, cards minus 105. But who do you like here in this one? Any uh, long balls, either that you're interested in? I'll always throw uh, Lindor up there at the very least. I agree with you. Uh, I, I like Lindor in this spot. I think Tommy Pham offers some value too, Scotty, at plus 550. That's a really, really good number. Those are the guys I'm looking at. I like the Mets in this game. Small play uh, with Manaya on the hill as a pick em against the Cardinals. Eileen Mets. Yeah, Eileen Matz, too, uh, to be honest with you. I think Manaya has been pretty decent. Arizona's at the Guardians tonight in Cleveland, and Arizona's favored, minus 120. Gallon of milk over Allen. I like that price on uh, the Guardians at home. I know the Diamondbacks have been winning a lot. I know they've been playing great baseball, but Cleveland at home, very tough at home, even money. And Allen has been one of their better pitchers, Cam. And I'll take J-Ram and a home run in this one. I like your style, Scotty. How about we'll go with Marte at plus uh, 410 uh, for Arizona. If you're going to give me uh, Washington National, what are we going to do with this game? Uh, that's a tough one with Washington. Who am I going to pick here? No, nah, I'm just going to stick with my guy at Arizona. I'm going to do that. I like Marte at 4-1. to one. All right, so Arizona's uh, playing Cleveland. So who do you like in the game, Arizona or Cleveland in this one? Gallon or well, Allen? I like uh, I like uh, Cleveland in this spot. Um, actually, sorry, I forgot. Jose Ramirez for Cleveland, Scotty, plus 425. I, I like that, but I, I will take them in the game as well. Arizona's been hot, but I think Cleveland's the play. All right, so to that Washington game, it's San Francisco and Washington in D.C., Logan Webb against uh, Patrick Corbin. I got to be honest with you. So San Francisco's juicy at minus 170. I want no part of that, but I don't mind the run line at minus one and a half with the Giants. The Giants are hot. They've been winning. I think they've won eight of 10. Uh, they're lighting it up. I'm going to take the Giants on the run line to beat Corbin and the Nats tonight in D.C. 
Yeah, I like the over in this baseball game. Lean Giants, and for a home run, Michael Conforto, plus 440. That looks pretty damn good to me. Cor Corbin's a gas can. I wouldn't even mind taking a couple uh, Giants in this spot there. Uh, Scotty, you know one thing. That guy gets, serves up uh, dingers. That's what he does. And I'll take the kid Fitzgerald. He's hit so many home runs for them, and he's hitting over 300. I'll take Fitzgerald for the Giants to jack one out. And Chapman's not been doing bad either. I wouldn't be surprised to see him blast one either. Cincinnati and Miami, 640 down in South Florida. Martinez against, don't call me Freddie Munoz for the Marlins. Since he minus 140, Miami plus a buck 18. And who do you like there, Cincy or the Marlins? Marlins have been playing better baseball, but I, I kind of lean Reds tonight. It's not my favorite game on the board. As for home runs, I got nobody in this spot, but a small play on the Cincinnati Reds. I mean, uh, the Marlins just kicked the Braves' ass in Atlanta. I'm going to take them at that price at plus 118 at home tonight uh, in Miami. Houston and Texas at Globe. Texas keeps losing. Brown against Heaney. I see it as a pick em right now. I could be wrong. I, I see these numbers are a little different, 120 and 105. Uh, it's moved a lot. Like I can't keep track of it right now. It seems like it's even money right now for Houston. Is that right, what I just saw there? Either way, who do you like in uh, Globe tonight? All the houses are different. I, I, I agree. Uh, Texas is the play. I know we've talked about them struggling. I think they get off the schneid tonight. You're looking for a home run guy. Uh, Garcia at plus 425 fits the bill for me, Scotty. But I think uh, the Texas finds a way against Houston. They're struggling too, so I'll take the home team in Texas. Yeah, I'm going to take the Astros and Brown over Heaney. I think Heaney's awful. Uh, and I'm going to take the Astros. They're a game out. I think a lot of the money is going to be coming in on them. When we come back, we'll look at the last four games. Uh, Minnesota at the Cubs. Boston is in Kansas City. The White Sox against the A's at the Astray. The White Sox have lost 20 in a row. And the game of the night is the Phillies and the Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. So we'll uh, take an eye on those four games, see who Cam likes, see if we like any more home runs in those tonight. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. 